there was a tree growing out of the top of that building. Today, there are trees that we want all around us. I mean, this is a spectacular setting and uh, really in another extraordinary step forward in uh, the exciting things that are happening in downtown Detroit. The appetizers that you've been eating today all came from this garden. Uh, the local food movement that has become so important. I mean, it really is uh, some forward thinking going on. Yes, the hot dogs were slaughtered from hogs that were rooting around right over there. Thank you, Mr. Carmanos, for jumping in. Uh, the other thing that I love about this today, I hope you've been given one of these cards, which shows you your opportunity to volunteer here. That's the way this garden is going to work. Volunteer gardeners pitching in, and then all of the food, as you're going to hear in just a few moments, is going to... Uh, uh, move on down the chain and down the line and spread all over the place uh, thanks to the folks at Gleaners. So let's uh, let's get started here with uh, the man who really helped make today possible. Please welcome uh, from CompuWare, Peter Carmanos Jr. Hello everybody. Thanks Devin for that kind introduction and for your support of this great city. Um, I have some prepared things uh, and I've got to go through them because I want to remember to thank all the people involved. Uh, but I should point out, uh, for those of you that uh, have gardens at home, that this garden is totally organic. Uh, we don't have to certify it. We don't have to get the food from New Zealand. Uh, this is an organic garden. And for those of you that garden, you all realize how difficult that is. Uh, no, no fertilizer. Uh, no bug killing uh, over there in the cucumbers. There's some uh, um, beetles that like to kill those things. And I don't know how you get rid of them. I offered to come over and sneak over about two in the morning and spray something on them. <laughs> the people in charge said, uh-uh. Thanks for joining all of us today as we officially open Lafayette Greens and Urban Garden. What an incredible space this really is. This is really incredible. When you think about what was here and what would have stayed here until somebody decided to build, uh, this is even more amazing because when we built the building on, uh, uh, on the old um, Kearns lot, that had sat empty since 1965, where the current company we're building is. And at one time, that was considered the most valuable property uh, in the United States, all right? And it sat empty then for 30-some uh, odd years before we built on it. So this is really nice, and, and God willing, it can get replaced with a nice new building someday. But in the meantime, uh, we're going to have uh, people really uh, benefiting from this and, and having... Uh, a great life experience volunteering on it. There are so many people responsible for creating Lafayette Greens, I'd like to take a moment and recognize some of them. Thanks to the mayor. Uh, the city council. Uh, and, and when you stop and you think about that, uh, think about how difficult a concept that this is to get through uh, a city government because it's it's they've just not done it before. Uh, so uh, we got a little frustrated that it took a little bit of time, but it got all done and we got all the approvals and it really worked. So it's a real uh, testimony to the mayor and the city council for able to get this thing going. Um, Carla Henderson and Nate Forb, who together have shown the will, commitment, and flexibility to support this project. We've shown the collaboration between government, business, and community can happen quickly and effectively to produce worthwhile outcomes. Thanks to the more than 50 Comptroller employees, their kids, and their families who have invested time and effort to build the garden. Thanks also to the neighbors of Lafayette Greens my friends at the, uh, at the uh, Athens Coney Island especially, and to the urban gardening community for their support, patience, and guidance. A sense of community is embedded in Contrawire's culture. We believe, as this place shows, that it's vital for our employees to be active 
and creative members of their communities. Lafayette Greens brings together this belief through two great passions of mine, gardening and the city of Detroit. And they have more in common than you might at first think. Like many of you who have contributed here, I'm a master gardener. I took uh, a Michigan State extension course um, a long time ago and became a master gardener and learned all about organic gardening and composting and the difference between a tomato and a green pepper <laughs> and the difference in planting them and all that kind of stuff. I appreciate what gardening, what about, I appreciate about gardening is that it represents the wonder and complexity of life. I remember one time losing a very, very large contract. I was devastated by it. And my solution to overcoming the disappointment was to go home and plant things. And I was working at it for about 10 minutes and I realized all the anxiety and disappointment had disappeared. It's a wonderful way to spend time. Colorful annuals, hardy perennials, vegetables, fruit-bearing trees are all part of a beautiful garden as they are part of the landscape here. Gardening is largely about the cycle of life. Different plants grow, flower, or deliver produce at different times of the year. And here in the heart of downtown Detroit, we have created an interactive, kid-friendly, local, and sustainable garden for all seasons. That's an interesting thing they had me say because I'd like to see what's going to be growing here in December or February or January. I don't see any cold frames. We got cold frames? Uh, they're coming. Okay, cool. This space is open year round to the community, whether to volunteer, to learn, or just relax in a beautiful environment. Our harvest will benefit Gleaners Community Food Bank, an excellent organization dedicated to fighting hunger in our city. Lafayette Greens extends a movement that includes the Riverwalk, Campus Marshes Park, and numerous other places and events that create spaces for all of us to come together. Detroit was once called the Paris of the Midwest, and together we're working hard to restore that well-earned name. Look around and you'll see an amazing combination of green, in brick and steel and wood. A true urban experience doesn't exclude nature and incorporates nature into vibrant public spaces. Excuse me. Excuse me. Oh, they left some things out of my final copy. Anyways, Megan Harris is the lady responsible all right, for putting all this together. Okay. Let me read the official thing. Special thanks to the leader of this fantastic project, our own Megan Harris. <laughs> Megan has worked tirelessly to take this partial from a vacant piece of land to the beautiful and productive masterpiece that you see before us today. At times, I know she was not sure everything would come together, but because of her leadership and perseverance, she has made it a reality. And thank you to Gwen Meyer, who works with Megan on a daily basis to keep this operation humming. I don't know, I wonder what happened to that. Somebody aced you out of the script. I guess that's all I really want to say. <laughs> Thanks for coming. I really appreciate it.